So we said, well, how do we create this purple cow? Uh, well, this, this kind of graph shows that, that of all things that happens out there, 80% of everything you experience in your daily life is, is, uh, is it, it meets your expectations. So, so uh, the analogy is the purple cow uh, made by Seth Godin. He's a marketing guru. And, and he said, you, you're driving out in, in, into the, into the you, 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 you're a city slicker, right? You drive out, and all of a sudden you see a brown cow. And you say, wow. It's a brown cow. You've never seen that because you come from the city. That's a pretty wow experience, right? You drive on, and a little bit later you see a couple of cows over there. Wow, that's pretty good. Five cows by now. You drive on, and an hour later you've seen 50 cows, 100 cows, and it starts to be, yeah, I kind of expected these cows to show up. And all of a sudden you see a purple cow, and you say, wow, it's a purple cow. So people's expectations change over time, what we want to try is get ahead of that curve and give them something that they didn't expect, something that exceeds their expectations. So we looked at what was out there. Um, April, April 2010, there was news apps in the field right away. Um, we, 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 we said that the expectations really are you, of course, need quality content, video and photos, weather and traffic, ability to share, fast load time, updated, easy to use. And we did focus groups, and they all said, you just need to do it like USA Today does it, right? So, so that was kind of, okay, we got it. But again, if we, if we wanted to replicate uh, what you'd, you'd, we either do on web or in print, that would have been the way to go. Uh, but we didn't want to do that. We wanted to see if we could create something that was a wow experience. Hyperlocal content, more interactivity, notifications, valuable ads, and magazine-like content, we, we kept saying, this is a daily magazine. This is not, this is not a newspaper. This is a daily magazine product with multimedia. Um, we wanted to personalize it and make it entertaining. Now, I don't think that the product is there, by the way. Um, but that was, that's the vision. That's, the, that's where we wanted to go. And what's wow to some might suck for others, as, as we learned. As they said, we started with, uh, with an RSS feed type of um, app, uh, optimized for iPad. Looks fairly, fairly good. And we did that August of 2010. Uh, and uh, while we did that behind the scenes, we had already worked on the strategy behind what we really wanted to do. So, so in, in the goal was for April 2011 to have our purple cow. What we decided to do, we created this product where we said, OK, we, we need to deliver on, on what's expected. We need to create this now edition that's, that's regularly updated that has uh, the news that you expect, right? Uh, that's current. Um, so that's 90% of each edition. It's split out into six topics. You have news, sports, business. You have uh, uh, things to do, entertainment, and a photo section. I believe I got that. Um, but what's, what's really cool and, and kind of what, where we try to create this purple cow is every day we have it's the ambition to create an, a feature that is above the rest, okay? So uh, the daily, you have 50 people in your design department. We have fewer than that. So if we could do one interactive feature every day that, that blows your mind, um, then we, we thought we had achieved something. And uh, it also includes the latest news in a form of an RSS feed. And, and all these templated things have some layers of interactivity. Um, Yeah, I think, that, I think that's it. So, so since I can't go through it, I, I encourage you guys to, to, to check it out. Uh, there, there's a lot of great stuff in there. And a lot of, um, from a design standpoint, a lot of focus on the HTML5. So I have another slide that talks a little bit about the workflow so I can talk about how we do it from a design standpoint. From a content standpoint, though, what, again, what, what we thought was Im important was that, that look at this as a new audience. So we're, we're starting from a blank canvas. And instead of looking at just what we have, we said, well, what do these people need? This age group, this lifestyle, what are they looking for? And, and then based on that, we had to come up with content. So of course, we have a, a, a big newsroom at the OC Register. Um, and, and they produce an amazing amount of, of quality work every single day. I'm not discarding that because that is really 80% of the app. 
because it's quality work and it fits for this target market. But then there's the last 20% where we say, okay, well, I know that in the print version you covered um, the Rotary Club down in uh, San Clemente. That might not make it in the iPad version because it's a different audience. Um, so we had to, if we don't have the content, we have to search the wires. If, we d if it's not there, we have to create unique content. So we have the reporters both from existing staff and freelancers and the production team, which I'll show you in a second, creating unique content just for the iPad. And then you have this uh, feature as well to, to kind of put the, put the icing on the cake. It's all about the target audience. So this is my most technical slide. So let's, let's see if we can, I can make sense of it. So, so the register works in a CMS called uh, CCI Newsgate. Are you guys familiar with that? It's, it's, it's this um, it's platform agnostic uh, hot hub where all reporters, they write, and it's all in that C CMS, right? So whether it gets spit out to print, web, mobile, whatever it is, everything starts in Newsgate, right? I'm sure you have something similar where, where you're working, right? So what CCI, they, we, we work with them uh, on creating uh, the iPad app. Um, in CCI, then when it comes from, from, um, from Newsgate, it goes into Layout Champ. Layout Champ is, is similar to InDesign. It's a clunky version of InDesign, but it's worked for years for print, and that was the resources we had, so that's how we were gonna do it, right? So. Again, the content goes in, we have repurposed from the other sources, we have unique content and we have stuff for the wires. Now this is where we, we, we said, okay, we got the content, we got a lot of know-how in this newsroom, but in order to get this target audience, we need some outside people to come in and help us out, okay? So we hired uh, a production team, a senior producer, associate producer, two graphic designers, and a video producer. And, and, I, and it's on purpose that I say two graphic designers slash programmers because uh, the daily, you said that you, if, you had, if you have something, you, you need to enhance something, you go to the guy that knows HTML5. Well, in our case, the designer had to be the programmer because there was few resources. So it, when we went out and hired these people, we had to find these people that knew HTML5 fluent in it CSS, Java, so they could create web widgets on their own, they could create HTML enhanced uh, content, and at the same time they would have a fantastic eye for design, how to lay out stuff and do the traditional stuff, all in one package. Um, the producers we got uh, came from broadcast. They, they had been in entertainment world, um, they knew a lot about how to edit videos, how to tell stories in a different way than what we were used to. So we took these five people and we planted them right in the newsroom, right in the middle of it. We didn't put them on a separate floor or anywhere else, right in there because we knew that this has to be a collaboration. So this is it's kind of, um, I don't know if this has been done before, but these five people are hired by Freedom Interactive. This is what, that's where I worked, Freedom Interactive, right? And they sit in the middle of all these people that work on the payroll of Orange County Register. And it's a fan it was just it was amazing to see the collaboration between these foreigners coming into to the newsroom and, and interacting with all these reporters and coming up with ideas for, well, this, this might work for print, but can we do this for the iPad? Well, you know, you can tell this story with words, but if we can put some layers on it, this would be a fantastic feature next week in the iPad. So, so, and this is ongoing, of course. But the five people we hired was not enough. Uh, it turns out that this was bigger than we had expected. So we have dedicated photographers that already sat in the newsroom, graphic designers, copy editors, and page designers that simply just kind of migrated over. As, as focus have, have gone away from some of the other things that we used to do, they've been, they've been schooled to now they're part of the iPad team or the tablet team, right? And, and then after it, it goes out from Layout Champ, it, uh, we spit it out in a product from Woodwing. So we didn't have the luxury of, of developing everything in-house. So it's existing CMS and it goes out to Woodwing. Woodwing is a company that um, uh, has a lot of experience with magazines. So everything, just like the daily, is manual. Everything is paginated manual right now. 
and that's for, 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 for good, uh, it's good and bad, right? You can go in and you can tell stories exactly how you want it, but in a newsroom where, where resources are lean, it's also been a, a huge challenge to do this. Um, and especially because you have 80% that might end up being fairly templated uh, anyways, right? Um, you might want to add a, a video or, or some, a photo slideshow, but a lot of it is still templated. But we actually, at this point in time, have to lay it out manually. Uh, I hope that will change. So on the advertising side, we, we went into this saying advertising is content. Um, so, so we set the bar really high for what we would allow to go into um, our iPad app. Um, editorial had a voice. They they could uh, you say yay or nay. They they actually were part of writing. Yeah, just like in print, write the guidelines for what is accepted. But in the iPad app, we actually adhere to it. So so if an advertiser came and it didn't live up to our standards, we would kick him out. Right. So that's probably the difference uh, in print. If you see an auto deal that has an ugly ad, it still goes in. Um, and. We also required that when they came in, we would, we would build the ads for them. We didn't allow them to build their own ads. We needed levels of interactivity, again, because our focus group said everything else we, we saw out there, that advertising is content. So on this subscription base, I, I, I just saw the tail end of the, the, the paid session. Uh, I truly believe that the industry needs to go in the direction of paid content. Um, and, and it was certainly our strategy that we wrote it that that's where we're going to go. Uh, so we said free access for a, a launch period, and after an introductory period, we were going to go to paid. Um, I don't know where that's at. I don't know if it's ever going to happen. I can't speak to that, but, but I know five months in that it's still free. Um, so we'll see, we'll see if, if, they can, if, if they're going to go in that direction. I, I do know that, that they said, um, we don't want to be the leader in this space. We'll let New York Times, some of the others try it out, and, and if it works, we'll go there. 